All right. Winter Clash is considered one of the biggest and most prestigious events in the rollerblading calendar. Known for its high level of competition and energy, attendees are spoiled with some of the wildest comp skating going from all the top skaters. For one weekend, Eindhoven, a southern city in the Netherlands, normally known as the technology and design hub and the birthplace of Philips Electronics, transforms into the epicenter for hordes of sweaty lunatics going utterly bonkers on skates. Over time there's been some absolutely outrageous skating gone down, but what are the top moments in Winter Clash history? All the stunts are performed by professionals, do not attempt this yourself. Yuto Goto is a very focused skater. He recently dropped a gem of a street section with assists from Carson Boyson and Don West. But he also knows his way around the park and when he puts his hair in sports mode with the braids, you know it's going to kick off. There's a ruck of clips of him tearing up Winter Clash, but I've gone with this one. Fakey 360 safety grab, dark side alley-oop topsole on the extension, safety grab back into the vert pillar. <laughs> <laughs> He'd blow an absolute gasket having to write that for like a magazine pick. He's absolutely potted it. That is a 147 off the break. The fakie 360 alone is a bit of an ass. But then to land on the dark side, the far side of the extension, going for a grind blind is utterly preposterous, man. And there is zero slop. It is 100% style, balanced like a spirit level, and he throws in a cheeky grab as he's dropping in as well, just to take the mick. It was so good that this bloke lost the motor function in his legs. <laughs> There's been a lot of good fast slides over the years. Winter Clash seems to entice them out of people, including channel fast slides as well. Danning has thrown out some bangers and probably my favourite one on the A-frame. Sizemore has also knocked out a few heaters with a particularly impressive one over this bus box thing. Sizemore has a strong catalogue of big tricks at Winter Clash, with a win under his belt coming in 2015. After a tough decision, I boiled it down to this 360 wall ride to back Royale. I suppose you could call that like a 450 disaster back Roy with a wall ride on the way. Like taking the Northern Line via Bank. It's a rich blend of stunt and tech. It's aromatic, man. You can almost smell and taste the thing. His head is leading the spin, getting around quickly to spot the landing. His wall ride is right at the top, right at the crest of the thing, giving him like an extra couple of split seconds to spot the grind. And then he's onto the grind. Absolutely amazing and ideal use of the obstacle. Well done. One of the most appealing and interesting things about Winter Clash is the course and the unusual, unique obstacles they create for the thing. Like Scrap Heap Challenge meets rollerblading. They can use anything they find. Trevor, Captain Chaos, grabs everything in sight. Big down boxes, various types of extensions spread across the course. Everyone loves a rainbow box and they seem to lend themselves to really interesting tricks. Montre and Eugen taking full advantage of this one and then obviously the obstacle which we just talked about that's seen some outrageous tricks on it not just from Sizemore there was another tech hammer from Nick Lomax showing outrageous ability and control but it's a different trick from Nick on another obstacle that I want to talk about he did a topsoil 270 back Roy on it first then upgraded to a topsoil 270 back backside budget acid Mad, mad. To start, he's got to peg it at that first grind box to make sure he's got enough speed to carry himself up to the top and then enough momentum to transfer across. The transfer across isn't a small gap and he's spinning as well, landing in a backside backside. Oh my goodness, so not just landing in that, but being able to hold that weight and that pressure. Get yourself in the right position to then slot it through to the acid. Unbelievable. Looking back through all the Winter Clash events, it's pretty clear people enjoy a spin. You only win when you're spinning. Win when you're spinning. Win when you're spinning. People love a spin to a grind. People love just a regular spin. Some of my favorite spin moments have been Chaz Sands, Fakey 5, or well, maybe that's actually closer to a Fakey 630, Roy to alley -oop top sole, 630 out. The Prince also loves a spin, and this fakie 540 hurricane top sole was frighteningly perfect. He made it look like a regular top sole. Perfect. Mike Murder Johnson's also been involved with a 450 back back grabbed with a 270 out. Diaby threw out that 450 disaster alley oop sole. 
Nils had a 540 alley hoop top sole. Nils has also dropped a couple of hurricane fishes, but this one was particularly sweet, disastering to the grind, so going over the thing. It's blind, you can't even see where he's about to be landing. He's got a pre booked grab in there, like paid for in advance, so he can just collect it on the day. And it's just all come together perfectly. Another memorable spin moment came from Eric Bailey with an alley oop 540 that grab transfer. I feel like that grabs are pretty rare. And to do a transfer going in one direction but spinning your body in the other direction, that has got a mess with your equilibrium. It would cause you a little bit of brain turbulence from mid spin. Sticking with Bailey, in 2008, him and Warapo Boonham went wild on the extension box, battling it out to see who would take the crown, both dropping big spins to tricks, but it was Bailey with this grabbed front torque to top sole that I really like. Got the duty free grab mid flight before he landed and then just slotted it to the top sole. So comfortable and so smooth. Bailey also took the crown that year as well. Flawless victory. Just seen a banging trick at Winter Clash and want to show your appreciation? Spotty dog foam hands. Having trouble getting served? Use the spotty dog foam hands to draw attention. Lost all your mates at Winter Clash? Use the spotty dog hands to locate and find each other with ease. Quick game of footy mid Winter Clash? Use the spotty dog foam hands as goalie gloves. The spotty dog foam hands are printed on both sides. They'll be available at the Loco Stand store at Winter Clash or by contacting me. Very limited numbers. Brian Schema is a man you can rely on to bring a stunt and a bit of amplitude, and he didn't let down at Winter Clash. He launched himself into the top third of the building to get a Macchio stool on this wall thing. Him and the builder that laid those bricks are possibly the only two people that have actually seen that view. It was monstrous, and it shows the comp has always had big moments. Even since its inception in 2005, when the first comp was held in Aurich, Germany, things have kicked off. Bart was there with a 450 disaster back Nugan, a deal with the fakie 450 back Unity, and Matthias Odga with the abstract pencil back back. Just an absolutely lovely shape on that thing. 2009 seemed to be the year for plaid shirts. All the big names were doing it and getting involved. In 2010, Jojo went all in. He went big. I'm the biggest bird, I'm the biggest bird. He got an event arena, he had a massive party, but it ended up actually putting him in a 70K of personal debt. That aside, I feel like 2010 belonged to the Baladies. They put on a right show. Jenna Downing was throwing out huge spins. Manon Derian coming out with the 360 sweat stance. Coco Sanchez making everything look clean. And Fallon Heffern and Guillambo just absolutely smashed it. Really love this fast tap to rocket fish. And this huge alley oop top sole to sole was mad. Another female that's always impressed at the Winter Class is Chihiro Azuma. She's consistently throwing down clean, smooth tricks with brilliant style. I feel like she always blesses Winter Clash with an alley-oop top sole. But I wanted to talk about this, this Royale to top sole. Now normally, it's like the front Ugin to top sole. So this is a bit of a rare one. It's a bit more of like an awkward switch, but she makes it look so good, so impressive, just owning that trick. And just like Chihiro with our alley-oop top soles, it wouldn't be a Winter Clash if it didn't feature Montrey doing a grind and some sort of flip or spin out of it. He absolutely loves it, man. Get him on a rail, he gets to the end, and his brain is thinking, I'm spinning or I'm flipping. His brain goes through the same process when he gets to the end of it. Good books, puts it down and flips one out. Winter Clash can also rely on Eugen Ennin to pop out a slightly more unusual or unexpected move, risking his bloodline with the Roy Giddy Up Roy. Talking of flips, Winter Clash has got a fair few of them. Julian Kudobi being particularly partial to a flip whether that's a single or a double. You can bank on seeing a fair amount of grind to grind transfers, with this down rail being a tempting target. Everyone gets stuck in from the AMs to the pros, male or female. One of the best tricks being this top acid to alley-oop top acid. Just how clean it's come out. And then this 450 Roy from Julian, for the same reasons, just very clean. Winter Clash and the competing pros 
like to treat the attendees. It's gifted us two of the best true top souls in competition by probably two of the best people who can do them. Alex Burston with this across up and down on the heartbeat rail and Austin Paz with a pacey one up the yoke. How often do you see the full Monty in a competition setting? How often do you see it anyway? Rare man. Matthias Silan got to work on this wedge rail bank looking thing and dropped to the backside, to the alley oop fish, to the back talk, and a macchia, an absolutely audacious trick to do at a comp, and another great moment. Again, thanks to the nature of the Winter Clash course, there's opportunities to go big and berserk, fully use a transition, but there's also obstacles that allow riders to show off their technical flair and style. I love seeing skating from the likes of Ren Fujiwara, Misaki Katayama, Naburu Katayama, this little cheeky fast food one from the Prez, and Soichiro Kanashima, who seems at home skating any old obstacle. I think this soul, little transfer to the alley oop soul on the accordion, was a precursor for this soul up to transfer soul on the rail to alley oop soul on the the far side rail, somehow hitting each rail on this mini bus type setup, all while he looks perfectly in control. The only time his arms are moving is to give him a little bit more momentum. CJ Wellsmore also had a blast on the accordion rail, which again, I think was a precursor for this showstopper. In 2014, the year he took the win, he did a 270 back Roy to 270 alley-oop soul a wild move to be pulling off at that sort of height and to grind off the end as well winning the grand national by a length i don't think we see enough big wall rides in competition so when they do come along they are a bit of a treat there's been great ones from joe atkinson and anthony potier who sent a huge one to bag himself the win in 2017 but just edging it as my favorite one of the wall rides has to be don bruce launching himself past this protruding rail was absolutely mental i also believe dom is more known for his fleet footed tricks and being more spontaneous in environments where there's lots of features to take advantage of but here he just absolutely levered it. Now the person I'm most excited to skate a park comp is Joe Atkinson. Joe is just in tune with the ramps. It's like they're on the same frequency or something. He really excels when the transition is like somewhat awkward. It allows him to truly display his like range of abilities and delve into the more less traditional kind of maneuvers. In 2019, he owned Winter Clash. He put a masterclass on that extension thing. Other people pulled off tricks in it as well, but Joe fully utilized it. I really like to think they actually awarded Joe that obstacle after the event, or at least like put it in the Winter Clash Museum with his name written all over it. He did all manner of tricks in it, which I have no idea how you could even train for those things. Like those obstacles don't normally exist anywhere else. I think the trick that really took the biscuit was a backslide up the thing to the stool on the top. To be that precise is so <laughs> risky. Just an absolute unbelievable maneuver. A great like end to the show and to his display at Winter Clash. Just incredible, man. Big thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel. You can join them from as little as three quid a month. Exclusive videos, sneak peeks, first look at merch and all that kind of stuff. Here's a couple of videos you can watch in the meantime and I'll see you again soon. Spotty dog.